Uh, today's topic, Shifting Mindsets for Successful Leadership in Higher Education, you know, certainly offers a platform for consideration in how we go about leading folks, leading our organization uh, towards the next iteration of whatever it is that we're desiring to become. Um, and certainly knowing that uh, a nimble mindset uh, that offers you know, growth is something that, from an innovation perspective, what the Sale Institute is really celebrating. It's something that uh, it's in our uh, belief system that you know, the idea of being strategic and innovative uh, in an academic world um, and providing that leadership so that we can be sustainable um, in the years to come and, and really di begin to differentiate uh, ourselves um, from the other institutions. So today, uh, what we're going to focus on is, uh, you know, this idea of leadership and being able to shift a mindset from one idea to the next. And Monica, are you controlling that advancement of the slides? Uh, you should be able to do that. Yeah, it's not allowing me again. All right, here, let me just... Uh, uh, there we go, I got There we go. So our objectives uh, for our time together today is to simply explore the implications of mindset within our context within higher ed, and then identify and take a look at maybe some of the triggers that might derail us uh, from our leadership potential. And in everything that we do with SAIL, we have our anchoring ideas and these six domains that uh, our executive director, Dr. Jason Lane, has assembled really uh, set the stage for all of our professional development workshops and all of our signature programs like the summer leadership retreat, uh, the winter leadership retreat, our department chairs programming. So um, within uh, that are the sales six domains of higher ed. And what could this look like in the constructs of um, shifting a mindset. So from there, we would say, you know, are your skills nimble or are they fixed? And how well do those six domains of knowing uh, impact you in your thinking, in your professional development goals or needs? So you might ask yourselves these types of questions. You know, what's in your toolbox from a skill set? How are you evolving? Uh, how well do you know your team and what are their goals? Not just individually, but per perhaps as a team. And then how do you go about engaging with the students? If you are having a, a, you know, the tip of the spear, or the direct line with, with students, in what ways are you engaging with them consistently so that you're keeping your finger on the pulse of what's happening on your campus? Um, from an institutional perspective, we all know that there's a job description for what we do, but where do we go that extra mile and where can I help? Uh, that's a question I think we could ask a little bit more uh, of ourselves. And then what's our direction? What compass do we have in the context of the work that we perform? So what we do today uh, with regard to self-efficacy and you know, Van Der's model of uh, building confidence and kind of like Henry Ford said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're probably right. So building the confidence levels through you know, these bulleted points here of mastery and verbal persuasion, all of these things fit into the context of a, a, a mindset that is really set in a growth uh, pattern versus something that might be set in a fixed pattern. So these are some foundational type of things. And when we do our one day workshop on this topic later in the month, we'll explore this in, in greater detail. So we'll ask ourselves, you know, do we give ourselves the emotional thresholds that we need to develop the confidence that we need and then go ahead and move forward with courage to make the decisions that might be a little bit more challenging and the mundane day-to-day -day types of things. And certainly uh, this work is built off of this book and if it's not part of your leadership library yet, I would highly recommend that you consider it. A uh, wonderful read and speaks to the global perspective on how we can as a subtext, you know, how can we learn to fulfill our potential in school and relationships and business and parenting and, and without question in leadership. So uh, Dr. Dweck, uh, really does a great job in articulating this model so that we can begin to put together, put together a template for our own growth and, and development with regard to mindsets. So in her work, um, she identifies two basic patterns. And the one on your left is this idea of a fixed mindset. 
So when you think about a fixed mindset, those characteristics of avoiding challenges or ignoring feedback, um, believing failures define who we are as individuals, all of these types of things that become, as she says, fixed in us, and believing that, you know, kind of like what we're born with and the talents that we have at that time and whatever we kind of nurture, you know, in a small way along our development is kind of what we have. But conversely, a growth mindset is the polar opposite of that. And folks and leaders in a growth mindset will believe that intelligence and talents can be developed. Uh, they believe that failures are simply temporary and they certainly welcome the idea of challenge and they welcome the idea of feedback because they understand the process and the dynamic there developmentally is good for their own growth and development. So they view other success as inspirational as opposed to threatening. And they believe that the effort towards the path is actually worth it because they know they're going to get something out of it on the back end. So from a perspective of leadership, there are moments where we will, if you can consider a pendulum, where we are really in a growth mindset. We're doing a lot of innovative thinking. We're having some you know, useful brainstorming sessions. But then there can be moments where, we, where the pendulum swings and now we could be in a very fixed mindset. And those are the moments where, you know, creativity might get stifled, where we just we're at a, a position of impasse, even where we're just unwilling to uh, pivot off of our point and be nimble enough to see a different perspective. So, you know, these uh, are what these might be some uh, things that you would hear folks say, or at least perhaps not out loud but maybe they'd be saying to themselves, telling them these stories that, you know, I can learn to do anything that I really want to do is a growth mindset. Um, I'm either good at it or I'm not. Uh, that's a fixed mindset uh, sort of story tell. Uh, when I'm frustrated, I give up. You know, how are we working as leaders to kind of embrace this individual if they have this mindset to coach them up and then what are we doing to kind of support them in their evolution as an employee? You know, I, I think back to my uh, time as a principal and even as a professor. You know, we had students and faculty at times that would get in a fixed mindset because going back to Bandura's model, they didn't believe that they could believe it. It didn't feel or uh, it wasn't something that they, they could really tangibly see or even tacitly embrace because they had something, a, a barrier, a hurdle that was getting in the way of that, and they couldn't get beyond it. Um, and they couldn't, you know, we, we often say you can't get out of your own way. Sometimes we need somebody to take us and, you know, make us pivot off of that so that we can see, you know, the different opportunities that we have in front of us. So from a leadership perspective um, and folks in higher ed, it's very important that staying innovative and staying in, in a growth mindset um, that we move forward. And we can get into this, this um, pattern of growth mindset. And from time to time, it, it, I, in my opinion, you know, it, it kind of good to, to stick around in that growth mindset, but we need reminders from time to time of what a fixed mindset could do for us, um, both good and bad. But we don't want to dwell in that space for too long because if we then say to ourselves, geez, you know, I don't think we can do this and Here's why. Is that really a valid answer to, to a question? Um, staying and, re and revolving and, and evolving through a growth mindset gives us the opportunity to build our confidence. It forces us to collaborate and it forces us to consider perspectives from uh, multiple areas so that we, once we have all the data that we need and once we have um, the ability to make decisions that we're making the most informed decisions along the way. The foundational principles of Dr. Dweck's work are, are in two areas. So if you can imagine a house, and this would be the foundation, um, the beliefs that skills are born, that's fixed, and the belief that skills could be built, that's growth. And focus, you know, uh, folks in fixed, uh, they're not interested uh, because they don't want to look bad and the performance outcomes that they uh, could be involved with really don't matter as much. You know, they're not seeing as the folks in the growth do uh, the bigger picture and getting the process better. 
So when you get uh, to a point in your leadership and your beliefs are fixed and your focus is fixed, it's very difficult for the key ingredients of effort, challenge, mistakes, and feedback to be useful to you because you're only um, perseverating really on one particular thing or one particular problem and you're not seeing the forest for the trees. Um, this does happen, it's happened to me, absolutely. Um, but how do we, how do we you know, kind of take a few steps back and then open up the door to a growth opportunity for us? So in both of these, what Dr. Dweck does is you know, explain how the perceptions of uh, effort and challenge, mistakes and feedback fit based on the beliefs and focus of a fixed or a growth mindset. So for those in a fixed mindset, they're not going to see that the key ingredient of effort is useful. They're not gonna see that it's necessary because they have a preconceived notion or at least some understanding, uh, predictive understanding that, you know, it's not going to be worth my time. This is just the flavor of the month. Um, so, you know, in that case, what do we do? So, Monica, did you just put that up there? Put a poll, poll question. Given our experiences in higher ed. Yep. Yeah, okay. the growth mindset. So, go ahead and answer that. Um, tradition, history, people, resources. And we have a couple more uh, as. Uh, you know, Dr. Ben Segura goes on with this content of the webinar, we'll be putting uh, a polls, um, you know, in accordance with that. Great, right. great. Right. So with uh, continuing with the challenge, these are the types of individuals that are likely to avoid them or back down from them because they, they frame it as a threat. So if you're trying to implement change, for example, within your organization, and you have an individual who, for the sake of their own disposition or personality, is somebody that's not going to embrace change uh, because they might see it as a flavor of the month. Uh, we have to do the work in front of that in order to get folks to think a little bit more critically about their decision and their role within it. So the data has come back. Uh, tradition and history, for sure, is overwhelmingly what keeps higher ed uh, from making those advances, advancements. Um, these individuals in a fixed mindset are also uh, discouraged because they avoid mistakes. They're, the risk-taking threshold for individuals is very different than it would be somebody, somebody who's in growth. And honestly, they, they do hate them. They hate making mistakes because it reveals something about them. And they get very defensive, which is the next one on the feedback. So, you know, if somebody goes in with a fixed mindset, they already have a, a, an attitude and a disposition that's going to be detrimental to the growth of the initiative and then they make a mistake and then you know they kind of get exposed and then you try to get feedback to them and they take it way too personally and they don't see it as helpful because they didn't you know buy in to begin with and they get defensive so it, it becomes very difficult to develop a communication system that's going to be consistent and develop uh, a relationship with individuals um, who are well, again unwilling to pivot off of this fixed mindset. Trying to advance a slide here. Conversely with growth mindsets, the key ingredients, you know, similar, not similar, exactly the same. Effort, challenge, mistakes, and feedback. They do see it as useful because they know that it, it, it's going to lead to growth. They embrace and persevere. Their thresholds for um, dealing with adversity and persevering through the challenges are far different, far greater for both folks in a growth mindset um, because they see it and frame it as an opportunity as opposed to a threat. And they use them to learn their mistakes. Um, they're, not, they're unwilling uh, to do the same thing that uh, the fixed mindset kind of champions is that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes, uh, presuming that you're not making the same ones over and over and then uh, 
fair and reasonable accountability system is built in. And they're gonna take the feedback that leaders offer them and use it in an appreciative mode um, so that they can begin, begin to uh, build greater skill sets. So we already answered that first um, question, given our experiences in higher ed, what inhibits growth. But let's go to the second one. Why might it be difficult for leaders to shift their mindset and pivot to a new framework or a new way of thinking? And I'll wait for that data to come in. And let's make sure we have a hundred percent voting rate. Okay, a little bit closer data. So vulnerability and commitment to a process that's not working instead of addressing the actual problem. Um, so I'll talk about uh, vulnerability and the use of vulnerability within leadership. And someone in a growth mindset perceives vulnerability very differently than somebody in a fixed mindset. If you've not read any of the work of Brene Brown, another wonderful author that you might consider adding to your leadership library. Um, she writes extensively about this. And vulnerability in her perspective and what she has learned as a researcher and as an author is a skill set that really is championed uh, for strong leaders because they understand who they are. They understand that they're... Um, their focus and their center is coming from a space of transparency and honesty and candor. So th their vulnerability and the perspective of approach to vulnerability is very different. They see it as them, themselves being part of a team, willing to make the difficult choices, but also being a member of a team in a growth mindset. So when they think about vulnerability, they show uh, what um, the expectation is for others, that it's, it's okay to fail, that we can be honest with each other, that we're gonna protect each other around the workplace in a, in a caring and careful way, and that vulnerability is a strength as opposed to a weakness in a skill set. Now, there's lots of data out there, um, on you know, kind of historic data on why individuals or leaders would not want to expose vulnerability because you know they could be perceived as weak, they could be perceived as wishy-washy, they could be perceived as somebody who doesn't have their act together. Um, that is a different leadership perspective than what a new group of folks who are being employed at our institutions are expecting. What's really interesting about vulnerability is new employees have a skill set that they bring. And if they make mistakes and they're chastised over and over again, not for just one mistake, but for the risk taking, appropriate risk taking, they're going to take their skill set after a while and they're just going to simply move on. They don't see the usefulness and kind of hammer, hammer, hammer all the time as opposed to, this is a growth opportunity for me. Hey, so, Scott, um, hate to interrupt you. We do have a hand up. Do you want me to um, allow them to talk, unmute them? Yeah, let me just finish this point and then, and then we can absolutely take the question. Perfect. Um, yeah, but you know, conversely to that, vulnerability is something that from a different perspective in a different time historically in leadership where we would never, never you know, allow our vulnerabilities to be seen by the people that we lead. 
in other spaces, uh, vulnerability is the same. In competition, in sports and athletics, you don't want to reveal what your vulnerabilities are because your opponent's going to take full advantage of them. In relationships and leading, it's very different. So we can take the question. All right, Janine, uh, go ahead and ask your question, please. Hi, um, I, my question is related to this change in leadership uh, expectations around vulnerability. Um, if one person is changing to be more open to vulnerability and being uh, allowing that, but they're surrounded by a report to people who um, view that as a weakness, how is that responded to in a work environment? And how does that affect changing culture? Yeah, great question. Yeah, it's kind of like swimming with sharks, right, Janine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, you know, that, that's, I've always viewed uh, this idea of leadership and vulnerability as something that has to be practiced and has to be safe. You can still, you know, be vulnerable and have a little bit of your wall up to make sure that you're not being, um, for, the, for the sake of the shark argument, you know, attacked. Um, but at the end of the day, you have to remain true to yourself and true to your beliefs and true to the mission of the institution that you're serving. Um, that's a cultural shift and it takes time. Uh, but it would, it's very difficult to survive if you're one of the, the fish in that uh, ocean when you're being surrounded at, at times it could feel like, um, like sharks, like sharks and shark infested waters because now you are laying yourself kind of out there uh, to be picked at. Um, and and that's, that can be, uh, and that can feel unsafe. So it takes a tremendous amount of confidence, um, kind of going back to Bandura a little bit. Um, you, have to, you have to have the confidence uh, that you know, you're, you're headed in the right path. Great question. I'm, um, just to let everybody know, we will be having a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So if, you know, a question is not very pressing, uh, let's let Dr. Vince Aguara complete his presentation. And we'll have, you know, um, a bunch of minutes to um, get to questions and answers. Yeah, absolutely. And then we're going to be wrapping up here soon anyway with regard to this slide deck. So if you could think of mindsets as a spectrum, not a destination, you know, on certain days when, our gate, when we have our A game and we're just, everything is coming together, uh, we're rocking. Um, on different days, at different times and in different situations, you might be in a growth mindset and growth patterns. While other times you might slip into some fixed patterns. You know, maybe the routine that you had in the morning was a little bit off and it kind of tweaks your day. It uh, doesn't get you back to that, to a growth mindset that you had the next day. So if you pay attention to, the, to your leadership and what you're focusing on and where your beliefs are, um, you can identify what caused you to have a little bit of derailment. Was it your beliefs that got you off? Was it your mindset or uh, mindset of growth? Uh, did something trigger your beliefs or your focus? to move you toward a pattern of thinking that might be fixed versus moving you uh, toward a consistent pattern of growth. And so if we refine our beliefs and our focus, we can focus on the action that help us to grow. And just like I said before, if, if you believe you can or you can't, you're probably right. So you have to make a determination in your mind what your beliefs are going to be and what flags you're going to, to raise and you know, how you go about teaching the planet what you believe in. Uh, and certainly then following it up with what you're teaching the planet about what your focus is. You know, you can tell a lot of, about an individual by how they go about spending their time. And I really believe that, you know, people who are driven to make a difference in the lives of others uh, have a belief and a focus that uh, could get out of whack from time to time, but, you know, we're human beings. But if the, consistently the ship is being righted, so that you are moving in a pattern a mindset that affords that growth, not just for yourself, but for the team that you're leading, that gives them the opportunity to be on board with you in that journey. So staying and attending to your beliefs and staying and attending to your focus 
can get the actions that we need to make our strides uh, in higher ed. 